Elderly woman raped in Westmoreland. A 91 year old woman was allegedly raped in her community of Darlington, Westmoreland, on Saturday night. Detective Superintendent of Police Dean Watson confirmed the incident to reporters Sunday afternoon. We are currently investigating the matter and we are also in the process of identifying the suspect, DSP Watson stated. Reporters understand that the elderly woman is currently admitted in hospital following the ordeal. J.C. F. Mourns passing of DSP Delroy Johnson The Jamaica Constabulary Force High Command said it regrets the passing of Deputy Superintendent of Police DSP Delroy Johnson, who is suspected to have drawn at a river in Tatchill Ochre St. Anne on Sunday. Reports from that about 2.45 p.m., Johnson along with another colleague was playing domino in the area when he went into the water. It is reported that he got into difficulties while swimming and drowned. He was fished from the water and taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The JCF High Command, Welfare Department, Chaplaincy and Medical Services Branch have been offering support to the immediate family members and the staff at the National Police College of Jamaica. Police named person of interest in Maypen shooting that killed nine-year-old. Police in Clarendon say they have identified a person of interest in shooting at a shop in Maypen which left a nine-year-old boy dead. The person of interest who is being asked to turn himself into the police has been identified as 25-year-old Brian Williams of a Windsor Avenue address in the parish. Friday's gun attack claimed the life of Shamar Walker, a student of railway in Maypen. The 29-year-old female shop operator was injured during the incident the police revealed. Reports are that around 7.45 p.m., Shamar and the now deceased woman were among a group of people at the shop watching television when a man came to the yard. The man is said to have sat among the patrons for about 30 minutes before opening fire in the crowd. Shamar ran from the yard onto the street and was chased and shot in the left side of the chest. When the shooting subsided, the shop operator was found suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to her body. Residents rushed the child and the woman to hospital, where Shamar was pronounced dead on arrival. The woman was admitted in serious but stable condition. The lone gunman escaped. Police are proven reports indicating that the female shop operator may have been the target of the attack. Spanish Town resident fined eight hundred thousand dollars for lottery scamming. Spanish Town resident Courtney Lee was fined eight hundred thousand dollars or five months imprisonment for possession of identity information in the St. Catherine Circuit Court on Friday. Lee pleaded guilty last year to breaches of the law reformed fraudulent transactions special provisions act. In April twenty twenty three. Police investigators conducted an operation in Spanish Town St. Catherine, during which lead sheets bearing the identities of people overseas were discovered. Lee was arrested and subsequently charged. He was represented by attorney at law Alexandra Shaw. Stolen car recovered in St. Elizabeth, suspect apprehended. The Era 3 Highway Patrol recovered a motor vehicle on the Longwood Main Road, St. Elizabeth, on Saturday, which was stolen hours earlier in Duane Park, St. Andrew. A suspect was also apprehended. Acting on crucial information, the team signaled a white Nissan Toyota AD wagon to stop. The driver reported refused to comply, leading to a pursuit. The Santa Cruz Quick Response Police team provided support, resulting in the vehicle being intercepted on Main Street in Santa Cruz. The driver reportedly attempted to escape on foot, seeking refuge in a nearby store, however, he was apprehended. He has since been charged with dangerous and reckless driving and is currently under investigation in connection with larceny of the motor vehicle. The police say his identity is being withheld at this time. This successful operation highlights the dedication and efficiency of our lawmen in addressing criminal activities and ensuring the safety of our communities, acting superintendent in charge of St. Elizabeth College Minter stated. He says criminals should be reminded that the parish will not be used as a route or host to illegal activities. Bama T charged with toxic operators murder. Kevin Brown, otherwise called Bums, Bam Bam, and Bama T, has been arrested and charged in connection with the murder of taxi driver Anthony Wilson, otherwise called Skipper, and Skip on December 19, 2023. The 21 year old of Trinidad Road, Kingston, is charged with murder, conspiracy to murder, robbery and aggravation, possession of a prohibited weapon, 
unauthorized possession of ammunition and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Investigator C. Brown and an accomplice chartered the services of Wilson through a transportation application to pick up a female passenger from Greenwich Road, Kingston 13. Upon arrival in the area, Brown and his accomplice, armed with firearms, boarded Wilson's vehicle and forced him to drive to Nance Drive. During the incident, the perpetrators robbed Wilson of his iPhone. Brown allegedly ordered Wilson to exit the vehicle, and when he resisted, he was struck from the car and subsequently shot dead. The assailants fled the scene in Wilson's white Nissan Expert motor vehicle, which was later found on Barbados Road in the parish. Investigations led to Brown's arrest and charge, following an interview in the presence of his attorney on Saturday. Man wanted in connection with 2019 attempted murder arrested. The Trelawney police have arrested a man who was listed as wanted in relation to the attempted murder of a shopkeeper which occurred on October 30, 2019 in Soyes District in the parish. Charge is Randin Gibson, otherwise called Jason, a 36-year-old chef of Bounty Hall, Trelawney. He is charged with attempted murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, using a prohibited weapon with intent to injure, use of firearm to commit a felony, unlawful discharge of firearm and assault at common law. Reports are that about 11 a.m., a woman was at her shop when Gibson, with whom she had a dispute earlier, opened gunfire outside her shop. He then entered the shop, grabbed her, and placed a firearm at her head. He attempted to fire multiple times, but the gun failed to discharge. On that occasion, Gibson then fled the scene with the firearm. The woman reported the incident to the police. Gibson, who was on the Trelawney Division's wanted person list, was apprehended on January 23, 2024, during a police operation. His court date is being finalized. PNP calls for a halt of fertilization distribution over vote bank concerns. The Opposition People's National Party is calling for an immediate halt of the government's fertilization distribution program and for a thorough audit to be done amid concerns it is being used to buy voting ahead of the local government elections. The call was made by Opposition Spokesperson on Agriculture Dr. Dayton Campbell in a media release on Saturday. Campbell claimed that significant quantities of fertilizers were distributed to political representatives of the ruling Jamaica Labour Party last night in Westmoreland. If these bags of fertilizers are indeed from those previously announced by the Agriculture Minister for the most needy and qualified farmers throughout approval agencies, like RADA, concerns arise over why JLP political representatives are receiving government procured fertilizer by the truckload, especially during nighttime, Campbell noted. In denouncing what he says was the corruption and diversity of fertilizer, Campbell said there was urgent need for transparency and accountability. As the nation approaches this critical election, the PNP remains steadfast in its commitment to ensuring a fair and just electoral process. The party firmly believes that Jamaica deserves a government with zero tolerance for corruption dedicated to the well-being of its people, the media release continued. Public can now review building permit applications at KSAMC online, stated Williams. Members of the public can now review building permit applications and approvals online at the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC. Mayor of Kingston and Chairman of the KSAMC, Senator Delwa Williams made the announcement on Friday during his contribution to the state of the national debate in the Senate. This is a pioneering moment for local authorities and I'm proud to lead the council on this initiative, Williams remarked. He explained that the public can now view online the stages of consideration for the application, make and view objectives, view stages of approval, and much more. This is a departure from what obtained in the past because in the past, Residents were only aware of the developments in two ways, by the posting of notices on the construction site and after the approval was done, Williams noted. Prior to this, most residents would not be aware of construction developments coming or taking place in their communities. Right now, what we do, as soon as an application is made, we post application on our website and we allow for residents to search, he explained further. Online searches can be done by a community, by district or by street, so the public will be aware of the applications that are being processed. You are able to do your checks, raise your concerns or objections, and those concerns or objections must be presented to the building committee in its consideration of the application, Williams noted. He further noted that the building officers 
cannot place an application before the building committee without also playing the objections raised on the application. The mayor pointed out that the building committee is comprised of persons drawn from a wide range of agencies, ministries, and civil society. This is a point that people are not paying attention to, but there are various associations and professional bodies that are presented on the building committee at the municipality, he noted, stressing that this allows for a more transparent system in the building approval process. This builds up a framework of publishing permits available. This is technology ushering into historic transparency. This is a people's council, bringing the people closer to its operation. We're moving the building inspection process to the next level, stated Williams. Meanwhile, he said the KSAMC will shortly to be moving to significantly increase the number of building inspections it has for the current five. The KSAMC chairman highlighted that since 2019, the corporation receives an average of about 900 applications per year with just five inspectors. With five inspectors, the municipality is staffed well beneath and prescribed number of technical experts, he stated. 10 million repair for White River Road. In an attempt to reduce traffic congestion and collisions on the White River Main Road in St. Anne, the Ministry of Local Government has allocated 10 million for repairs to be done. Work will be done on three sections of the road according to the National Works Agency NWA Regional Manager, Devon Lilly, who is managing the project. Three sections from the Millfort Road back to White River will be fixed. The challenge we're having now is the traffic congestion, so we are working with the contractor to see how best we can resolve that, he said. Work is expected to begin soon and will last for six weeks. We have seen the critical nature of the road, so the NWA, along with the contractors, will decide how they are going to approach it and get the work done, Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie told reporters during a tour of St. and Northeastern last Thursday. The White River Main Road, which is a part of the North Coast leg of Highway 2000, is heavily traversed by motorists heading to and from Portmore into Montego Bay via St. Anne. Inspector of Police of Ocherest Police Station Christopher Faulkner welcomed news of the impending road work. The road condition is posing a huge problem for us, especially in the mornings. Traffic congestion is seen regularly. Also, we have, we have been having a lot of accidents as a result of poor road conditions because persons are swerving to avoid potholes, resulting in traffic congestion. So we are really grateful that this will be repaired, he stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.